The first thing is uh, I want to give Coach Rhodes and, and his team a ton of credit for the way that they battled and fought. I think that he's doing a phenomenal job with this program, and uh, the future is, is extremely bright here. I, I said when Will got the job uh, that I feel like you know VCU hasn't even reached the heights that it will uh, in the future, and, uh, and I feel that way now even more so uh, than I did then. Uh, in terms of a normal game, I mean, it, it, it really is and it isn't, Brian, to, to be honest with you, because, you know, you come in here, you prepare, you, you try to get your guys ready, you, you, you try to uh, have them with a, with a good mindset coming in, and that's no different than a normal game. Uh, but, but obviously for some of us on the coaching staff, having had been here in the past, there's a lot of relationships and connections and um, you know, ties that we have here, and that, that gives you some different emotions and different feelings. Um, but, you know, I, I try to make it more about our team than anything else because we really needed to come in and, and, uh, and get a road win like this. And uh, I, I think uh, when we were up big, for VCU to come back and, and, and you know, go on whatever run it, they, they went on, uh, it says a lot about their team. But our guys really hung in there and made some big plays down the stretch. To, to pull it out. Coach, when they were on their way back to that 19-point deficit, did you kind of feel like you were at home, like, oh, yeah, this feels familiar? They're, they're on their way back. So. Well, I mean, it's the first time I've experienced uh, the crowd here as a visiting coach. And, uh, you know, I, we always used to talk about, uh, on the coaching staff here, we always used to talk about how many wins a season this place is worth, you know, by itself. Um, and, you know, obviously it's the five players on the court for both teams that, uh, that determine the outcome. But, man, um, you know, going through that tonight when VCU was making their run, uh, it, it's, it's as I always said it when I was here, it's as good of an, as an atmosphere as, as, in, as anywhere. And we, we've played some really good ones. Well, I'm appreciative of Mike for <laughs> recommending <laughs> that uh, that uh, you know people be nice. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, you know the power of suggestion we always say is is very strong, but I, I'm really uh, I try to strike the balance between you know us again focusing on our team and making it just like any other game, but then also you know if we're coming back to Richmond, getting a chance to see some of the people that that meant uh, and continue to mean uh, a great deal to me and to my family and to some of the things we, 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 we were able to accomplish. So it was great to see people like Sophia, people like Diane, um, you know, a lot of the guys on the staff that we worked together with. And then just to be around some of the fans uh, before the game. Um, obviously during the game, tried to focus on what we needed to do. But every once in a while, you, you know, you, you – uh, you know, you take a deep breath and you say, man, this is, this is a special place, and I was so unbelievably fortunate to, to be here for six years. What about your team, Sean? That after not winning a road game last year, and you know this is your first one this year, that they kind of took that punch in the mouth, yep. lost the lead, place went bananas, and they held on. Well, I think it really says two things. I think it says the, the, the one thing, it's kind of a glass half empty, half full thing. I think the, the – the one thing it says is we have to be better at playing with leads. We knew that coming into this game. Uh, we knew VCU was going to make a run uh, when we got up, uh, but we need to do a better job handling uh, when other teams make runs. We had some turnovers. We had some missed free throws. Um, but I think you got to give Mike and his team a lot of credit, too, because they really attacked and, and played with great aggressiveness. Um, and then the, the flip side of that is for our guys to battle back make some big plays. Most free throws were big after an offensive rebound. Uh, the three-point shot that Dylan made was, was big. So we took a step, uh, but we've got a long way to go. Hey, Coach, um, what did you say to your players? You know, when they went on a 27-7 to run, was there anything that you said to them to try to get their mind focused? I mean, you know how loud they can be here in the studio. Yeah, I just try to get them to understand we're okay. You know, don't flip out. <laughs> Keep your composure. Um, you know, play with poise. And, and – you know, those guys, the two guys that were just here and, and our other guys did a nice job of saying the right things to each other. But sometimes when you haven't gone and, and, and done it, uh, the things that you say 
uh, only go so far. You got to go do it. And uh, so for the guys to do that tonight is a big step for us. Uh, he, he, he came down on his wrist twice. Um, so uh, he's got ice on it right now. We'll have to uh, evaluate it. But I, I thought Andrew was huge to start the game. Uh, we don't win the game without the way that he – I mean, he was lasered in on what he needed to do in transition, uh, making the extra pass, and obviously making threes. Uh, so that was really, really good. And I thought he did a nice job defensively as well. You talked about, in terms of, we'll talk about some make this game, but this is three halves in a row over 50%. <clears throat> Going back to Florida, do you feel like this is stuff you can sew together? Well, you know, Brian, we're pretty good shooting twos. Um, we've got to get better from behind the arc. Today, you know, we actually made some. We made seven, which is a lot for us, and we shot a good percentage. Um, t to be honest, free throws are as big as anything um, because when VCU was making their run, uh, I think we missed five out of six at one point, and – it just there's two things. Number one, it's points, you know, that you're that you're not taking advantage of, and then number two, just momentum-wise, when you miss a couple free throws, or five out of six like we did, it gives the other team a, a lot of positive momentum. Coach, you guys have Muhammad Bamba projected to be drafted number five overall in this year's draft. Uh, we know he's he's been around the block a little bit. Um, what are you expecting from him tonight? And we also know that he's good with. Uh, <coughs> Protection. Is there anything special that we haven't seen from Bama that he has in his arsenal? Yeah, um, Mo's got a lot left in him. Uh, Mo's got a lot of great uh, qualities that, that he's going to continue to bring out. I thought this was one of his better games that he's played so far. He's only played seven college basketball games. And so as high as he is projected, as, as talented as he is, he's still a freshman who's got a lot to learn. I thought BCU's bigs did a nice job attacking him. And, you know, they were able to score on him on, on, a, on a few occasions. And he, he, he lost them coming out of pick and rolls. Um, I think uh, uh, Santos Silva is going to be a phenomenal player here. He's a VCU type of dude. I mean, he, he has a toughness and an aggressiveness to him. He does not play like a freshman. And, uh, you know, he, he's got a really, really bright future. But, yeah, Mo, he'll continue to do more offensively. Um, but the way that he's protecting the rim right now, I think he's averaging about four blocks a game. is huge for us, changing some other plays. And then, you know, to go get 13 rebounds is big. Okay. How did you think, uh, uh, you think Coleman played coming back to Virginia? C minus. Um, but, you know, it's tough to go home and play. Uh, and I'm hard, probably harder on him than anyone on the team. Uh, but that's how it needs to be. And uh, he, he's going to need to be better at a lot of things. But the one thing about Matt that I, I do really appreciate is no matter what play happens, he's on to the next play and he's focused on winning, helping his team win. So he had two points tonight, but he's not, you know, in the locker room lamenting about that. He's just fired up that his team was able to win. And I think he played a really, a really big role in that. When they went on that, when Lisa went on the run, being on the visiting side, how difficult was it to communicate with your guys on the floor? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to communicate because it's so loud. Um, you know, we had a, a few miscommun miscommunications on offense where they, um, they, they really were the aggressors and we got on our heels and we weren't executing what we were trying to run. But to be honest, more so than the communication, it's just the noise and the energy uh, that's in your, you know, in your face and in your head. And if you don't have a level of poise and composure about you as a team, it, you know, it can't help but affect you. So, I mean, that's why the winning percentage here since this place was built is what it is. Um, you know, over time, there's been several coaches, there's been all different teams, but this is a special place uh, to play a basketball game. Last one, this game obviously you know, happens because of the clause of the game. <coughs> when you leave, and you know how hard it is to get a team like Texas to come into the, this place. But this is why. Right. It, would it be better for the sport if people were more willing to do it than well, I think it would be better for the sport, but that's just not why people schedule. They don't schedule what's better for the sport. Uh, you know, you got to give someone like Tony Bennett credit um, because he says, hey, I'm going to do what's good for the state of Virginia basketball. Now, don't, you know, don't think that he doesn't have a level of confidence that, you know, he's got a chance to win those games. Obviously, it's never a guarantee. 
But, uh, yeah, I think these type of games are great. I think, you know, anytime uh, you have a high-level team like VCU, you get a chance to play a home game against, you know, any team from, you know, a quote-unquote power conference, uh, you know, the crowd's going to be like this. And it's, it, VCU's got a great chance to win. Uh, so what we tried to do when I was here was schedule as many of these as we could, um, but a lot of coaches aren't going for it. Blaine Taylor impersonation. Did, did you happen to catch the uh, Shock Smart impersonator at the end of the bench? Did you look like he did a good job? Was there someone impersonating me? Well, I know that Gary Watkins uh, and his, his crew down there, they have those tickets and they, they like to dress up. Um, they were trying to get my attention the whole game. So I, I made a decision early on. So I'm not going to acknowledge these guys. You know, I'm going to focus on our team. And then after the game, I was able to go say hi to him and talk to him. So, no, I did not see the impression. I'm sure it was terrific. But uh, that's, that's another example of this place and, you know, one of the unique things about it. Last one. Uh, Eric Davis wasn't shooting great. Um, he was actually really effective and aggressive and taking it to the hole. Yeah. Was that something you talked to him about, or did he just sort of take it on himself to be more aggressive? Now, actually, uh, we watched tape earlier today on the bus heading over to shoot around. And my, I showed him some tape of him being really aggressive and then some clips of him being tentative. He has the, the widest spectrum of, like, being tentative to being aggressive of almost anyone I've coached. So just try to get him to attack. The three-point shot was not going for him. I thought that was a great look that he had in the corner, but it didn't even draw iron. Uh, but the way he put the ball on the floor was big. Um, and then those free throws at the end, obviously, were really important for us. Thanks, all. Thank you guys.